Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture video, we will study characteristics of NMR signals. First one is the number of NMR signals. The number of NMR signals in the spectrum of proton NMR or carbon NMR depends on different types of the nuclei. It may be different types of proton in proton NMR are different types of carbons in carbon NMR. <coughs> the second characteristic is the position of NMR signals or chemical shift value. The chemical shift value of carbon or proton NMR depends on chemical environment of the nuclei that is environment of proton or carbon. The third one is the intensity of the signals. Intensity of NMR signal depends on number of equivalent nuclei that is how many same type of protons or carbons are present that gives the intensity of the NMR signal. And the fourth one is the splitting of signals. The splitting of signal depend on different nuclei different types of nuclei which are non-equivalent. So it can be the non-equivalent protons that separates signal of NMR in, in the peak. So we will discuss the number of NMR signals in proton NMR in detail. These number of NMR signals will be produced because of the equivalent and non-equivalent protons. So we should know what are the equivalent protons. Equivalent protons are the protons which are present in same chemical environment. Whereas non-equivalent protons are those protons which are present in different chemical environment. So we will look at the examples for equivalent and non-equivalent protons and also we will discuss that the intensity of the signal varies according to the number of protons. Here is the first example of ethane. In this molecule, these three protons and these three protons are in the same chemical environment. So there will be six equivalent protons which will produce one single, one signal and this signal will be intense and it will give the intensity of the six protons. Here is an other example of cyclobutane in which all the protons are in same chemical environment and these are the eight equivalent protons. So these eight equivalent protons will produce a single signal. Similarly in benzene ring the environment of all these protons are same and one signal will be produced which will be of six protons. In acetone, these three protons are in similar environment as, in, as these protons of the other side. So the same environment of these protons will also produce the single signal or peak. Now we are going to discuss non-equivalent protons and we will take the examples of non-equivalent protons. So here is the first example which is propane. In propane if we look at the structure these three protons of CH3 and these three CH3 are in same chemical environment. So these are these, these will produce the six equivalent proton signal and here CH2 group, the, these protons are different than these six protons, the surrounding protons and it will produce another signal of two protons. So in this way, if we assume that these are the A protons and these B, so A will give six equivalent protons and B will give two equivalent proton signal. So A and B are non-equivalent. So two signals of two and six protons will be produced. Here is another example of 
ethyl chloride in which these three protons are different than these two methylene group so these three protons will produce one signal and these two protons will produce another signal so in this way two signals will be produced here is the third example which is the cis 2 butene in this case these methyl group which contains three proton in first and three proton other but but both of these are on the same side of the ethylene group car, uh, group so these are the these are present in same environment and these two protons are also present in the same environment so in this case the six proton signals will be of these six protons and these two proton will produce another signal of two so the intensity will be six ratio two here is an another example in which these methyl groups are at transposition of this carbon this carbon carbon double bond but again these three and these three protons are in same environment and these are the same environment which are represented with a and the other methyl represented with b group so a we have two protons and for b we have six protons so two signals of six ratio two in this case the all three protons have different environment so these are represented with a b and c because these three protons and all three protons have different environment so these are so in here now here is an another example of enantiotropic protons so enantiotropic protons will pro, will also be the different in chemical environment so these two enantiomeric protons will produce two different signals so how we can determine that the protons will be non equivalent or uh, these are enantiomeric or not so first we will discuss that if we replace one proton with some other atom it will produce an isomer or stereo isomer so such protons are non equivalent so by replacing the proton with some other atom if an isomer is produced or an enantiomer is produced then we can say that these protons are non equivalent if the isomer or stereo isomer is not produced then it means the protons are equivalent or they are in present in the same chemical environment so we are going to discuss these with examples let's suppose here we have two protons and we say that these protons are non equivalent but when one of this proton is replaced with z if it produces two isomers that are mirror images of each other by replacing this proton if we have a mirror image of each other then we can say that these two protons are enantiomers of each other so if the protons are enantiomer of each other these protons will will be called enantiomeric proton by changing the position of the z it produces mirror image so these are the enantiomeric protons so enantiomeric protons will be non equivalent before this we will discuss an another example where isomers will be produced so here again if we look at here if this carbon this hydrogen is replaced with z if this hydrogen is replaced with another atom which is z it produces isomer then it is non equivalent proton like here if we replace this z to this position it will not produce isomer the compound will be same so if the compound is same so these are the equivalent protons and if we replace this atom at this position now this hydrogen is replaced with z it means that the isomer will be produced so if the isomer is produced it means that these protons are non equivalent protons
now we are going to take some other examples like here we have cyclohexane or toluene so we, we here we have toluene then how many signals will be pre, will be present in this spectrum are the intensity of the signals so this ch3 group will produce a signal of three protons and here is another proton which is of different environment and these protons will be c d and these two protons will produce another signal which is e if these two protons if this ch3 group and h group is an enantiomeric if these protons are if this group is fixed and this proton is fixed at this position either inward or outward then these protons may be different here is an example of phenol and in this case this hydrogen has different environment than these two protons and these two protons have different and then this proton so it will produce four different signals in case of phenol now we are going to discuss position of nmr signals our chemical shift value which is delta value are represented with delta the position of nmr signal depends on chemical shift value of our sample of our protons or carbon from the reference standard so the shift of the absorption position of the sample from the absorption position of the reference standard is called chemical shift which is characteristics of the chemical environment of the proton so this chemical shift value depends on chemical environment of the proton for this reference standard tetramethyl silane is used so tetramethyl silane is used as a reference standard or it is also called as internal standard tetramethyl silane here we have shown the structure of tetramethyl silane which contains 12 protons and all 12 protons are in same environment so these are equivalent and these protons are attached with most electropositive silicon atom so in this case they will produce a field signal so what are the characteristics of tetramethyl silane it is an inert solvent it is miscible in organic solvents all protons are equivalent silicon is electropositive then carbon causing maximum shielding to absorb upfield from the protons of the sample so it is taken as zero ppm or zero parts per million how we determine the chemical shift value or what is the chemical shift or delta scale so delta scale chemical shift is quoted with parts per million so for the spectrophotometer of 100 megahertz how we can calculate the parts per million so the formula is the delta scale in parts per million is the shift downfield from the reference standard divided by spectrophotometer frequency in megahertz into 10 power minus 6 which gives us parts per million so in this way we will get that 100 hertz will give us 1 ppm 500 hertz will give 5 ppm and 1000 hertz will give 10 ppm in case of 100 megahertz spectrophoto uh, nmr spectrum spectrophotometer here again we have shown that how we can calculate the delta value in parts per million here we have the frequency of the proton which is down downshift from the tetramethyl silane and here is the frequency in megahertz of our instrument and 10 power minus 6 let's suppose we have frequency of the proton at 400 hertz so 400 minus 0 which is the frequency of tetramethyl silane divided by 100 for 100 megahertz instrument if the instrument is 400 megahertz then we can divide it with with 4 if the instrument is at 60 megahertz then we will divide it with 60 so it will give 4 into 10 power minus 6 so it is 4 ppm 
that is 4 divided by 10 power 6 means 4 parts per million. So in this way we get the delta value in parts per million. So thanks for watching my video.